Hi everyone, I'm Jess and welcome back to my course Learn Excel with Jess on Mac. The first video that I started this channel with was a very easy introduction to pivot tables. You can find the link below in the description. But today I want to tell you that there are so many more tips and tricks that can make pivot tables actually fun and make your life easier. I will be walking you through three of them today but know that there are more coming in the not so distant future. So without further ado, let's get started. Before we get to those tips and tricks, I want to align us on the raw data that we'll be using. I will be continuing to use this hypothetical 2021 invoices that I used in my first video. Now, normally, if I just wanna create a very simple table, like the one you're seeing here, looking at what is my revenue by month so I can look at my highest or lowest month, this table will suffice. But what if I wanna add a second field? What if I wanna see what is my revenue by month and by customer? So let's do that. We're gonna go on the right hand side here, pivot table field, search for the customer, click and drag. It looks like this. Not too bad, you can, see, you can still see things. But what if I wanna add a third one? What if I wanna see what is my revenue by month, by customer, and by salesperson? So I can do a holistic analysis. I'm gonna find that salesperson field name, click and drag here. What do you see? All of the new fields that you added just keep going down and down vertically. It's not very aesthetically pleasing, is it? It's also hard to read and that makes it hard to analyze. So we're gonna fix that. What we have to do now is go up to the Pivot Table Analyze tab, click on Options on the left-hand side, and the fourth one down, you will see an option for a classic pivot table layout. Go ahead and check that mark and click OK. Now, what do you see? All of those fields that were going down before on the month customer and salesperson now are displayed horizontally. To me, this is a much easier way to read the data. And as a bonus, you can also change the order of this. Now, if you want to see it by month, salesperson and then customer, you can click on the salesperson, hold and drag it, depending on how you want to see it. The second tip that I want to share with you is called repeat all item labels. Now in my first video, I talked about the purpose of a pivot table, and that is being a summary of all these rows of data that we have so we can more easily consume and analyze it. If you look at this table that we have created together, it is okay for an audience. You could clean this up by removing the subtotal from the salesperson, and you can do that by clicking anywhere on the column B, right click, and uncheck subtotal salesperson. You could even go further and do the same for month. Now it's cleaner. But what if a summary was not your end goal? What if the reason you're doing all of this is because you have to end up filling out a form that would list out the month, the salesperson, and a customer with the dollar revenue? And in this form, you have to fill in every single cell. So if you were to just take this pivot table as is, and copy and paste it, you will quickly see that there is missing cells right here, under February, under June, and under Joe. Why is that? Well, according to the data, both Joe and Lydia sold to Kiran in February, but because of the grouping, Excel only lists February once for Joe and not Lydia. And if you have to do this and fill out the form for many, many rows, you don't wanna to have to do this manually. The way to fix that is go up to the design tab, click on report layout, and choose repeat all item labels. And voila, now all of those cells that were blank before are now filled in. And now you are ready to fill in your form. Copy and paste the data and then put it into the form. My last tip for the day is called slicers. But before we get there, let me 
reset this table so we can get ready for that. In my first video, I introduced filters, which is a way for you to drop fields that you want to include or exclude in your analysis. Let's take month as an example. Find month, drop it here. Let's say February, March, and April are your strongest months, which is great for sales. But you are curious to see how did you perform for the rest of the year. In a filter, you would simply go here and unselect February, March, and April. So that's a filter. Well, slicers are exactly the same. The difference is that it displays all the different months that are available, and it saves you a few clicks. So let's get that set up. Go up here to Pivot Table Analyze tab, and under there is a button called Insert Slicer. Click on that. And here you can choose which slicer you want. Let's choose month, which is what we were working on. And for fun, let's add item purchase. Click OK. And here are your slicers. I'm going to drag this here. As mentioned, slicers serve the same purpose as a filter. For example, let's say you want to know what is your sales for July. You will simply find July here under the month slicer and click on it. Let's move on to the item purchase. Let's say you want to know what is your sales for table. So let's first clear the month because you would want to include all the months where you have table sales. So go up here in the funnel for month and click here for clearing the filter. And then under item purchase, go down to table and click on it. And if you want to know multiple things, let's say you want to know the sales of table and dog food in all of the months of the year, well, you already have table selected. So to add dog food, what you want to do is hit command key on your keyboard and then with your mouse, click on dog food. And that will add both dog food and table total sales. And there you have it three tips and tricks to make your pivot table more powerful. As I said, I'm already working on the next one and I'm so excited to be sharing them with you. Please let me know what you think in the comments below and I look forward to seeing you soon.